Drama City Productions presets. You are plugged in for the Podcast Wrestling Society, where you can get dynamic weekly pro wrestling and MMA related content. Give us a follow on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at P-O-D-W-R-E-S Society so that you can stay in the know. Faith is the place and the sky's the limit. And if you like what you hear, give us a five-star review and hit that subscribe button. Woo! 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 Now, your host, he is the one and only Troy Adams. It's the Podcast Wrestling Society, y'all. Thank you all for joining the Society. I am your loving leader, benevolent host, Midwest Monster, and the man who makes you reach for the sky, boy. I am Troy Adams, y'all. And with me today, he may not know chicken-style kung fu, but he's still my tag team partner. Give it up for the Mark Briscoe to my Jay Briscoe. We them boys. It's Greg. What up, Greg? What up? This is our last episode before SummerSlam. And actually, by the time this airs, you will be in New York. So how about that? In the NYC. Well, how about that? And I will be working. So (laughs) there's that. Ouch. Yeah, my vacation doesn't start until this weekend coming up. So it is what it is. But whatever. To start off the podcast, I wanted to let everybody know that uh, we are officially on Spotify now. So, yay! If you want the links to that, we got we are on TuneIn, Stitcher, uh, iTunes, Hushka, obviously, and then uh, now Spotify. And I have been posting our archived episodes. I've been keeping up with it so far uh, on YouTube. So... Go check those out, and all the links and everything should be on social media, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, all that good stuff. For uh, Twitter sphere. Oh yeah, just look for at Pod Rest Society. So, and of course, if you want to get some cool uh, swag for the podcast, definitely go to redbubble.com forward slash people forward slash Pod Rest Society and. If you want to advertise with the podcast, whether you have a product or a podcast of your own, go to advertisecast.com forward slash podcast wrestling society. There you go. We've shilled all of our stuff and in record time, Greg. We didn't have to spend 10 minutes. Give the minutes. old Barry Horowitz pat on the back. Hell yeah. Where's, uh, where's that old Jewish song that we can play during this part? Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> oh, let's don't be offensive, but yeah. What do, what do you mean? You were the one that brought up Barry Horowitz. You got to play the theme. I never his freaking religion. It wasn't his religion. It it wasn't because of well, I mean it was because of his religion, but that was his theme song. So it's not like I'm just pulling this out of my rear, Greg. Uh, it was a little bit of a rocked out theme song too, but Oh yeah. Well, hell yeah. Just to let everybody know, uh we are recording on using Skype for the first time, so if Greg sounds a little different, hopefully he sounds better quality if not uh we'll just go back to using the phone because you know it would be kind of useless but we're gonna see how it goes. On that. wow we're gonna see how it goes and if i sound a little different it's because i have a flu i just came down with it yesterday and it's kicking my ass so yay me yeah but what doesn't uh-huh you know what screw you let's just get into the news shall we Real news, all right? Brought to you by Fox. What the hell? (laughs) Let's get in. We have new sounders, by the way. We're going to demonstrate it here. Let's get into WWE news. Yay! That was our first new sounder. We have have another one for the list, bro, but you'll hear that later. Spoilers. Oh, man, we've got a few um, unfortunate stories here to, to dive right into. I guess... Not, not to spoil the May Young Classic for everybody, because I don't know who won or whatever the hell. Is it still going on, do you know? I think the finals are set, but I didn't look at anything because I want to watch it. So Okay, well, did you hear about the injury? No. Okay, well, 
Uh, just to let everybody know, uh, spoilers, Ramon's pick is out. Uh, according wow, really? To, yeah, per Wrestling Observer. A year after a torn ACL kept her out of the inaugural tournament, Tegan Knox, the former Nixon Newell, suffered an injury to her other leg at uh, that night, a couple nights ago's May Young Classic tapings. Knox was facing Rhea Ripley in the quarterfinals when she hurt her leg, her left leg, uh, on a suicide dive. She apparently she landed like knee first on the steel ramp. Damn. Yeah. And how do you overshoot it that bad? I don't know. And she posted a picture showing like a shattered like it was like a drawing of like a shattered kneecap and whatever. And she said, yeah, basically. Um, so I would assume she broke her leg, shattered her kneecap, something to that effect. But yeah, she tried to continue but was unable to, and the match ended by referee stoppage. Knox was looked at by doctors and was visibly emotional after the injury. Paul Triple H Levesque, I like how they had to specify who the hell it is, by the way, uh, <laughs> spoke to the crowd about the situation and initial, initially indicated that Knox had a broken leg along with a broken heart over not being able to finish what she started. He said it would ju uh, just be a bump in the road for her. That's a big bump if she broke her damn leg. She just came back. She hasn't even been on TV. What the hell? That's, yeah, it's kind of heartbreaking. Yeah, that really sucks. It's like you just, this is like a, a Chris Saban deal, man. Oh, man, that's, yeah, that's the one. I'll never forget that, unfortunately. I know. I waited, we waited, what, a year for him to come back? And he comes yep. back night, wasn't it night one? He freaking yep. messes up his other leg. I'm like, what the hell, dude? <laughs> but then he comes back and wins the TNA title. So whatever, you know, for what that's worth. But the motor city. What is that worth? Anyways. <laughs> <laughs> you said it. Uh, but yeah, so uh, the crowd, somebody in the crowd was live tweeting during this and said, I think she was supposed to win because we're getting some random dark matches now, and, like, you know, they've been kind of keeping us in the dark for a while. So they assumed she was supposed to go over Rhea Ripley, and then they had to rewrite stuff. But I don't know if that's accurate. It's all rumor in any way. Someone in the crowd wrote it on Twitter. It's got to be right, dude. You well, can't just put anything on Twitter. Exactly. Only the truth goes on Twitter, all right? But what if tweets conflict? Then which one is the right one? I don't know. I, I assume anything by Dave Meltzer. Real tweets. What the hell? Anything by good old Uncle Dave. Well, here's a weird story. I just... And I wouldn't have talked about it except for this last part here. That uh, it's become quote-unquote real, sort of. You know, with all the uh, sexual harassment and whatever stuff coming to light now from years ago. Everybody likes to dig up old stuff from years ago now. On a resurfaced 2012 podcast... MLW owner and former WWE writer Court Bauer says that Randy Orton would consistently greet new writers by pulling out his penis, touching it, and then introducing himself to the writer and telling them to shake the hand that he just touched his penis with. When they were, when the writer would, oh my god! When the writer would refuse, Orton would yell at them, basically cut a promo on them for refusing to shake his hand, threatening to tell the bosses. All while his penis is still hanging out. WWE released a brief statement to F4WOnline.com that they are, quote, looking into the matter. What the hell, man? <laughs> it's not I'm funny. I'm Randy Orton. Shake my hand that I just touched my junk with. <laughs> he pulled out the viper. <laughs> All right. It's this is why I wouldn't shake Dave Meltzer's hand at the Shark Tank. <laughs> yeah, this is why. <laughs> oh my gosh, this is. <laughs> you had your junk out next to him. <laughs> it might have what might as well have been Randy Orton. You should have cut a promo on him for not wanting to shake your hand. Oh my gosh, I would have got four stars if it had been Japan. I got five. But <laughs> oh my gosh, this is just it's disgusting. Like it's just sick, man. And when I first saw I just I'm not saying I don't believe it. It just yeah. I don't know. Well the thing is this was said back in twenty twelve, six years ago. And this is just now like being talked about on social media and dug up. Like what 
the hell? Here's the thing, though. It's a podcast. It's not like a buried tweet from like someone no one knew years ago. I feel like this yeah. would have been heard or something. Yeah, I know, right? I mean, Court Bauer, if, if you know anything about MLW, like, Court Bauer is, you know, the guy there. So, like, what the hell ever? I don't know. Ah, uh, it's just, that's, it's Stay tuned. so gross. And the thing is, like, I question it because a news site posted, well, it was like, you know, a, a, uh, not necessarily a news site, but they run a wrestling news website, whatever, which anybody could do. But they posted it or tweeted it, whatever the hell. And I replied, I was like, this seems a little far-fetched. I don't know if I believe all this crap. And they were like, oh, really? And then they posted a transcript from a podcast where Edge said that JBL used to, uh, quote, haze the rookies in the shower by going up behind them and, like, soaping up their ass. What's wrong with that? Some people need help with that. <laughs> you know what? If, if you're into that sort of thing, then that's the sort of thing you're into. But I it just... Not there's anything wrong with that. No judgment, but uh, there is judgment if you're sexually assaulting other people, and I would definitely consider JBL soaping up my ass sexual assault. I would, however, not consider Randy Orton shaking my hand with his junk hand sexual assault. So <laughs> I don't, dude. If he, if a man is approaching me with his junk out, telling me shake my hand after touching said junk, I may call sexual assault on that. With it, that's I don't know. That's just, it's sick. I don't freaking know. It, ugh. Things that make you go, ugh. But moving on, running away from that story. <laughs> super oh, man, quickly. I want to sound this, man, out of nowhere. Wow. <laughs> the Viper out of nowhere. Shakes his hand. The junk hand out of nowhere. <laughs> like, why is that a bad thing? If you only knew. Oh, my gosh. <sighs> All right, now we can move on. Yeah. We got in all the all the crap. Uh, the No Holds Barred podcast says that Brock Lesnar met with Vince McMahon prior to Raw two weeks ago and said that he wants to work in both WWE and UFC. Man. It's not going to work in UFC. He's going to get the crap beat out of the UFC. So. <laughs> well, that's, that, that's doing a job. Whatever. That's still working. I mean, that that's like saying the Brooklyn Brawler didn't work. This doesn't bode well for us, Greg, because this means that Vince McMahon could get a wild hair up his ass and decide, you know what? At SummerSlam, we're keeping the title on him because he's big mm. and sweaty. But so is Roman and Braun. Yeah, but they're not quite as well. Braun, maybe, but Roman's not quite as big. And, well, yeah, I don't know. He's borderline sweaty enough, but I don't know. It's sweaty, man. What the hell? Well, I just, I don't. Uh, I'm, I'm really hoping to God he like they get that freaking title off of him. Son of a... By the way, do you think this stuff with Paul Bear or Paul Bear? God, uh, Paul Heyman <laughs> is a is a red herring, or do you think like they're gonna move him on from Brock? I don't know. I got a feeling he might actually like, turn on him and help Roman. I don't know. That'd be cool. I don't know. Like people are talking about, he needs to be with the AOP, which. I fully agree with because the AOP are not like, you know, masters of the mic. Like, what the hell happened with Ellering, man? Like, keep him with the, like, he was part of the package. That freaking package. Gotta get it on <laughs> Monday nights. I did not see that coming. <laughs> there um, you go. You didn't see the package coming. Boom. Like Randy Orton. <laughs> There's like another innuendo in there. We're gonna leave that alone. <laughs> what uh, the hell? All right. Well, anyway. Speaking of SummerSlam, Rusev and Lana versus Andrade Cien Almas and Zelina Vega has been added to the SummerSlam pre-show. El Idolo! Well, I know you're happy because you get to see your favorite uh, Mexican and Andrade Almas. <laughs> True story. Oh, man. Not wrong. Zelina friggin Vega. By the way, did you see her like go off on Twitter? Because apparently people keep thinking that she's still with... Austin Aries for some reason. Yeah, it ticks me off, man. They don't realize that her and I are together. Oh, yeah. Hey, her and I are together every time I close my eyes at night. Hey, that counts. <laughs> I knew you were going to say that. I was waiting for it. Uh, man, you've been on it tonight, man. You've been, you've been picking up the signs. All right. 
Uh, an advertisement now lists Jeff Hardy versus Randy Orton for Hell in a Cell. Watch the junk hand, Jeff. <laughs> 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 that's just gonna be a th- God. <laughs> that's just gonna be a thing. <laughs> uh, we need to stop. Uh, but anyway, though that could o- the junk can out of nowhere. <laughs> though that could obviously change. Um, and AJ Styles versus Samoa Joe and Roman Reigns versus Kevin Owens has also previously been listed for the show as well. Man, if only that Roman Reigns versus Kevin Owens was for the Universal Title. It's gonna be. I have a feeling it's going to be a number one contenders match to see who's going to face Braun at the Survivor Series, which yeah. I'll probably be at. Man, that means you would have went to WrestleMania, SummerSlam, and Survivor Series all in one year. Yeah. That's three of the big five. Yeah. You lucky turd. Well, I'm not going all the way out to California for frickin' Survivor Series. I wish I would have went a couple of years ago when they had Money in the Bank in uh, Columbus, but unfortunately, at the time, I was a little low on the fundage, so couldn't go. But I'm waiting, man. I'm wait- Well, last time, they brought Fast Lane to Columbus last time, and I was like, you know what? I'll pass. Turn out to be well, a good Well, you're going to get a lot of uh, HCW shows, though. I mean, you're going to have your pick of litter, dude. Oh, my gosh, yeah. They're not going to have the big five. They're going to have the big 12, meaning that every pay-per-view all year round is going to be the big ones all right (laughs) we got a couple more coming for you by the way but more than just a dayton with destiny and rumble in the jungle we've got some more shows lined up uh these are gonna be t-shirts by the way more t-shirt ideas you've given me some i wish we were joking around by the way about all this oh my god look there is nothing funny about HCW. This is serious business, okay? Real news, big league. <laughs> <sighs> All right, moving, <laughs> moving the hell on as quickly as possible. Well, speaking of uh, Kevin Owens, I guess John Cena versus Kevin Owens has been booked for WWE Super Showdown in Melbourne, Australia. Did you see that? Yeah. I'm super excited about this uh, because I, I'm sure you remember. You remember those awesome matches between those two when Kevin Owens first got called up? Oh, yeah, vividly. Man. Well, technically, he wasn't even called up yet when they first started feuding. He was still NXT oh, champ. Oh, yeah, he was still the NXT champ. Yeah. So this is, man. Yeah, because he lost the title when we were at NXT, and then he was at SummerSlam the next night, remember? Yep, yep. Yeah, we were talking about, oh, he's going to be a double champion, and he wasn't, but it was still cool to think about. Um, but, yeah, I'm, j- I'm just hoping 100,000 people, man, in that uh, in that stadium. I hope they tear it up like I know they can, and uh, I hope Cena's got his working shoes on, his, his working Reeboks on, man. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, Brad Shepard says that WWE apparently waited too long to pick a city for WrestleMania 35, which sounds odd. And they they're now having problems finding a location for access. They've apparently considered doing, quote, multiple store locations or a smaller version of it. That sounds insane to me. Like, right? Yeah. Um, and this pick takes so long. I mean, they're in New York. How, how hard could it be? I don't know. And, and, the, and the thing is. I normally because when I first read this story, I'm like, eh, that sounds like bull crap. But literally everybody is reporting this. So, I mean, I guess this guy was just like the first one, I think. But this has been reported by multiple sources. So this is real. <laughs> it's real. <laughs> real. <laughs> oh, man. I love that callback. But anyway. Yeah. So, man, uh, WrestleMania. How did they wait too long? Like, that just sounds like the craziest thing I've ever heard. I know. Uh, wow. So access might be a little different for you and Ramon this year or next year, whatever. We'll see. Alistair Black's groin injury will require surgery, and he will miss TakeOver Brooklyn 4 this weekend. There's now talk of a debuting Matt Riddle being used in his place in the main event. Wow. I don't know how much stock I would put into that because that's kind of a 
odd way to debut Matt, but at the same time, that'd be awesome. And I know you and Ramon would, you know, sorry to the people in front of you. I would lose it. I, you'd have it. I don't you'd, know. You'd have a new pick. How he feels about him. Yeah, I would. I don't know how he feels about him. I, I honestly don't, but I, think, I would lose it. I thought Ramon liked him. Oh, maybe he does. Him I and I, the moment. he always talks fondly about him, so. Because he was always Did like. You say he fond- <laughs> no, I didn't say he fondled him. What the hell? He's not Randy Orton on himself, okay? Oh, my God. Why are we going to keep going back to that? <laughs> because it's the best story we've had so far. Well, I don't. I shouldn't say the best, but it's like the weirdest. Dude, literally the only person in the world that would shake his hand if he did that was Naked Median. Or a certain person you and I know from Dayton, but. <laughs> I'm leaving that alone. Because you know I'm right. I'm that's, leaving it alone. That's his boo. Well, and he didn't I, agree with when he got the bag put on his head. Moving on. <laughs> do, do, by the way, kudos to anybody who remembers that, uh, who knows what I'm talking about. Was it Cody and Ted DiBiase, or was it just Cody that used to do that? Um, or am I missing Yeah, something? it was just Cody. Was it just yeah, it was Cody, Cody when, he, when he got his face broke and he was like un, undashing, right? And yeah. All that. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it was, uh, yeah, Cody was uh, putting a paper bag on people's faces like they were ugly or something. Yeah, <sighs> because he was, like, yeah. quote, unquote, because, <laughs> you know, it was... I have a figure of him uh, with a removable face mask, by the way. But it's weird because he's in the dashing, like, outfit with the silver boots and the logo on his butt, and he's smiling, but he's still got the face mask on. I'm like, eh, it doesn't really make sense, but whatever. Uh, Maria Canellis, speaking of injuries, I'm listening. <laughs> wow, uh, suffered a broken wrist while training for her return. She still says that she hopes to wrestle at Evolution. Tape it up and get back in there. Well, for what it's worth, her husband can wrestle at Evolution too. Oh, <laughs> I'm just kidding. But seriously, his gimmick is awful. I will, uh, I will say this: as bad as his WWE run is. And I don't know about you, but I think that's pretty indisputable that his WWE run is god-awful. I disagree, but whatever. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, him coming out on the stage and pretending to hold his own hand. <laughs> that's fantastic. Um, that's he, money, man. Yeah, that's well, asses and seats. While he comes out Third to... Third time I mentioned that tonight. Oh, my gosh. Well, he comes out to a song that sounds like it's sung by Michael Bolton. But anyway, he... Uh, I, I, it was, it's... For the best, I think, that he went to WWE because, one, he's clearly getting paid more than he was in the Indies. And the other thing is he got free rehab out of it, which he clearly needed. So, I mean, everything works out, I guess, so good for him. But, yeah, I hope uh, hope Maria recovers soon. I I think she deserves to, to wrestle at Evolution. I mean, she was one, you know, she, from, from what I heard, every, I've never heard a bad word about Maria like in shoot interviews or anything. Yeah, why would you? Well, CM Punk sure liked her back in the day, but uh, and that's a tease, by the way, to a story we will be covering soon. Hashtag stay tuned. But anyway, stay tuned. No, it's not about Maria or CM Punk's love life, but it is about Punk. Matt Hardy has been raising speculations about his retirement with cryptic tweets lately. But he apparently says that he is definitely not retiring. However, he is injured and in a lot of pain. Hmm. Take some time off, man. He's been running hard and heavy for a while. Like, go home, hang out with the wife and kids, man. Don't make any more kids. Just go home and relax. Well, it's a little hard. Never mind. Never mind. mind. Wow. A little hard not to make any more kids with his wife? Yeah. Trust me, I, I get it, but... Rey Mysterio told the Miami Herald that nothing is official with him re-signing with WWE just yet, but that is still expected to happen as early as next month. Well, you know, if he does sign with WWE, a certain hobo wrestling federation is going to be coming after him legally because, you know, he had a handshake agreement with them. They had their junk out and shook hands. That means something. (laughs) Two in one, baby. Boom. Uh, That will not be a t-shirt. 
uh, on Redbubble, by the way. There's not going to be a T-shirt about having your junk out and shaking hands. It's not going <laughs> to... I can't imagine how I would get away with that. But we try to keep it a little clean there, at least. I mean, other than our hobo shirts, like Hobos Still Rule and Hobo Effin' Wrestling, which you can pick up at redbubble.com forward slash people forward slash pod rest society that's right got the t's in there again um uh, you think you can uh you can sign with who <laughs> because, yeah I mean, exactly yeah it's a it's a toss-up man uh this last story uh for the wwe news i saved till last because it's more speculation than anything um i figured you and i could have fun with this one According to PW Insider, Hulk Hogan and Jimmy Hart were backstage at SmackDown Live this past week. Uh, not the This is airing on Wednesday. I'm not talking about last night. I'm talking about the last one. Uh, Nick Hogan also posted videos on social media of himself remixing the NWO theme, but he has not said why. The original NWO recently filmed something at, at Hogan's Beach Shop, and Hogan is teasing the date October 27th. Mm. So, there's speculation out there. Uh, one of them, uh, one of the speculations is that, because clearly we're not going to see the return of the original NWO in a wrestling capacity. There's no freaking way. Well, I don't, I don't know if you heard, but Kevin Nash just won like a, uh... Not my local one, but some BTW title. So he's yeah. a world champion somewhere. So I, I did see that. What are you that. talking about? He's not coming. It's not possible. How dare you? I, I'm one right there. Well, breaking news, his quad exploded right after that picture was taken. So, Well, more breaking <laughs> I'm, news. I'm no sorry. surprise. Yeah, I'm sorry. I had to. Uh, that was the same BTW, might I add, that Big Cass made his wrestling return to. Big <laughs> Big ass with two Z's. <laughs> Why? Because Greg, it had to happen. By the way, I don't know. Did you saw the picture, right, of him holding the belt? Yeah. Okay. Well, was it just me, or does that look like they wholesale ripped off the IWGP title? Yep. I was whole like, yes. holy crap! That's what I thought he was holding when I first saw him. Like, what the hell am I looking at? I know. I looked. I was like, like okay, that, okay, okay. <laughs> Yeah, okay. that makes more sense. <laughs> but I was like, dude, they basically took the IWGP title, pulled off the like the letters IWGP, and slapped on Big Time Wrestling. <laughs> oh, mother oh of God. God. If only God could help us right now. <laughs> what is going on at BTW, man? I just... Kevin Nash is their champion. Big Cass made his wrestling return there as Big Cass with two Zs. I just I like how you have to make sure to point that out. <laughs> I do. Yeah, the double Z man. That's like right along the lines of uh of relic, which of course is killer spelled backwards. <laughs> or red rum, which is murder spelled backwards. That was his indie oh. name, by the way. I'm not joking. This is not a rib. Uh <laughs> this is real. Wow. Uh nice callback. Twice. Twice. Got it in. Got it in. Boom. But uh yeah, uh, I mean, Hogan's not going to wrestle. There's no way WWE would ever let him wrestle. Although Eric Bischoff on his podcast, 83 Weeks, um, did say... Available now in the archives. Wow. <laughs> Good grief. Uh, but he, he did say, uh, he's like, I know how Hogan's mind works, and I'm paraphrasing him here, but he said, I know how Hogan works, and he said, if Vince McMahon called him right now and said, hey, hey, Terry... Uh, we got something for you. We want you to return to the ring. Uh, what kind of shape are you in? He's like, I know what the answer should be, but the what the answer would be is, oh, I'm in great shape, brother. Sure, I can do it. He's like, but the answer should be, hell no, I'm not getting back in the ring. And then, yeah. of, and then of course, Scott Hall is in no shape to compete in anything. So... Mm, opinion. <laughs> I still will never forget when I was watching uh, whatever Bound for Glory or some TNA pay-per-view and uh, him and Six Pac were taking on the Dudley boys and his freaking gut was hanging over his trunks and everything. 
somebody in the chat board said, ah, good to see Scott Hall got in shape for this one. (laughs) (laughs) I'll never forget that. But uh, the speculation is that there's going to be a new New World Order that the old New World Order is going to introduce on television. I don't know. I'm just thinking of the possibilities right now. The Hobo World Order. I'm thinking, you know, Titus O'Neil, Apollo Crews, and Kurt Hawkins are off the top of my head, but well, oh. well, that that's a given, Greg. That one's too obvious. Come on now, think. All right, I'll I'll think. I'll think. Sorry. Use your brain, damn it. Be more original. But anyway, yeah. So that's that. Oh my god, this is so stupid. <laughs> it is. <laughs> but seriously, that is a speculation, though. Those three, really? No, no. I I mean the the new New World Order. God. All right, I'm done. I'm, I'm done. Sorry. Holy hell! This is this went off the rails quick. <laughs> well, that's all the WWE news that I have. Uh, did you have anything else, like WWE related at least? No, I mean that whole thing about, about the whole thing about um, Brian Christopher's death not being a suicide. I mean, a, a rumor apparently. No, they they proved it was. It I don't was know if you suicide. saw that, but no, I didn't. No, nah, they're working on it, I guess. But oh, they're they're still I investigating. I don't know how. It, I don't know how it couldn't be. I mean, I don't know. Well, somebody uh, could have hung him, I guess. I don't know. That's just... That's sad. Did you see uh, some indie show that uh, he was working? I guess Jerry Lawler wore the Grandmaster Sex A vest to the ring. Yeah, I did. Yeah, that was sad. What was, and then he faced freaking James Ellsworth. Like, good grief. That makes it a little worse. But, that's a tribute and a half, man. Of course, yeah. Oh my gosh. But yeah, that's that whole thing is just so sad. I was listening to um a little bit of the King's podcast when he was talking about the whole situation. It was just it, it's it's bad. <sighs> but yeah, so well, that's all I got for WWE news. I guess we, we should move on to uh, lighter topics, right? Oh yeah. What can that possibly mean? Well, we're going to move on to the list, bro. Do you even list, bro? I don't know, bro. But uh, hey, do you, if you have the look, bro, and you want a different look, bro, redbubble.com forward slash people forward slash pod rest society. Boom, got it in again. Get a t- tight on that. Get a t shirt, a clock, uh, if a phone case, stickers. Man, it's a ton of stuff. And it's, if, it's not badly priced, if I do say so myself. I will not give you a personal phone call if you uh, buy from us but uh i will give you <laughs> I, I will slip into your dms on twitter how about that and you know I'll slip it in the dms what the <laughs> all right i'm moving on anyway this week what did i say so wrong slip it in the dms yeah why are you gonna take it so weird yeah i took it weird it wasn't just delivered super weird whatever yeah, i'm glad we got that hashed out <laughs> just shut up uh anyway this is the uh this week's list bro is the top 10 SummerSlam main events last week we did the top 10 uh SummerSlam matches that didn't main event this time it's the matches that did main event bro so let's get this going bro uh number 10 i said the 2003 Elimination Chamber match for the world's heavyweight title. Triple H versus Kevin Nash versus Chris Jericho versus Randy Orton versus Goldberg versus Shawn Michaels. I thought... The wrong Ro- guy won. Wow. Uh, I thought Rob Van Dam was in there, but was he not in this one? Or am no, I he, just- wrestled, he wrestled Kane that, that one. Okay, yeah. So he was in the next one, right? I think that was the one where he crushed uh, Triple H's throat. That was the very first one. Okay, so that. All right, yeah, this was the one Triple H won right then when or right where he yeah. he nailed Goldberg with the yeah with the sledge. Yeah. Okie doke. Anyway, that was. I mean, I did not like the ending whatsoever. I thought it was kind of meh, but I mean, whatever. It was still a good match. I was well, this the one where freaking. Uh, Nash debuted the buzz cut. Yeah, he was going, getting ready to go fill in the Punisher. Yeah, that epic role that he had as the Russian. 
Yeah. Uh, anyway, moving on quickly. Number <laughs> number nine. The Rock versus Brock Lesnar, 2002, for the WWE Undisputed title. Good match. I forgot just how good that was. Yeah. It wasn't as good as the match that went on before it, you know, the uh, Shawn Michaels return, but it was really damn good. So, I, in all honesty, I've been wanting to see The Rock return to take on Brock Lesnar, but I kind of don't want to see it, because with the way Brock's been, I don't know how good that match would even be nowadays. It might kind of sully it for me. Is it wrong that I just want him gone? Brock? Yeah. Yeah. Unle- I mean... <sighs> I don't know. Oh, I'm so sorry. I didn't. Lazy. It's wrong. I guess. Okay. No, it's just it's it's <laughs> the thing. He. Uh, it, I know. Uh, what you meant. Part of it is him being lazy that's ruined it for me, and part of it is I think WWE is freaking ruined him because I think they've been in this quest to. They're like, look, if we hate people, if we make people hate him really bad, maybe they'll cheer for Roman. You know, <laughs> as in contrast, it's like, no, you're just kind of. Uh, making us hate Brock Lesnar and kind of ruining his star power. Like, he's boring. He's boring. Heyman's gotten boring, and I never thought I would say that. I just, I'm not entertained by a Brock Lesnar segment anymore. It's the same thing. Oh, whatever. He's lazy. Uh, number eight. I said The Undertaker versus Bret Hart with special guest referee Shawn Michaels, 1997 for the WWE title. Hated Hart- it. Hart and soul someone did get a loogie in their face and it wasn't vince mcmahon but well if you think about it two people in two back-to-back gigantic pay-per-views got loogies in their face from bret hart this year (laughs) oh man but yeah great match those are three of the best wrestlers ever in the same ring so there you go this next one. It's about time the Undertaker got on a good SummerSlam list. I know. I feel so bad because he's so good. And then, like, just we've. Uh, he's been slipped in in just, like, such terrible positions. But there you go. Uh, he does make my list later, by the way. Spoilers. Number seven Randy Orton versus Nobody. 2004 for the World's Heavyweight Championship. Oh, Nobody. That's the, um, the special agent in the Fast and the Furious. Uh, movies right now. Wow. Uh, it's Randy Orton versus Stevie Richards for the World Heavyweight Champion. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. Russell. It, I'm just kidding. It's Brit, uh, It was Chris Benoit defending against Randy Orton and that match. Uh, great. It, this podcast was a great while last. We're getting thrown off. Yeah. Oh, man. Well, what are you talking about? I already threw myself off. Oh, wait. Oh, sorry. Never mind. Um... But yeah, yeah, we we're talking about Maria Canellas earlier. I think. Never mind. Holy hell! <sighs> this went off the rails quicker than Randy Orton pulling out his junk in front of a writer. But <laughs> that's like four times. Boom! In the same in the same chunk. <laughs> but, oh, there was a chunk, all right. <laughs> to make me blow chunks. Keep talking about it. Uh, but yeah, so that was when Randy Orton first showed off his SummerSlam NRB, and. uh <laughs> oh yeah, that's one of your favorite hashtags in history, I believe. Yep he uh, he became the youngest world champion in history and debuted the uh, the annual SummerSlam um, chub. I guess I I can't think of a better way to put it. But yeah, the NRB. So yeah, I guess it wasn't just the writers who got to see it at that show. Not only is this like the fifth time like his thing is coming up, but like this is like Giggity. two different contexts, man. I know. So I'm gonna play a coach, and I'm gonna say the the words of this week's podcast is Randy Orton's manhood. Yeah, exactly. There, you, we're gonna get hashtag junk hand trending. All right, everybody out there in the Twitter sphere, hashtag junk hand and hashtag Randy Orton's NRB. Moving on. We'll uh, we'll, we'll sweet out NRB and what it means if you want to know. <laughs> uh, just go on UrbanDictionary.com. Look it up. Just look it up. I guarantee it's on there. Uh, number six. This is my second special guest referee match of the list, bro. Uh, John Cena versus CM Punk. Special guest referee Triple H. 2011 Undisputed WWE Championship special guest referee match. This was part of yeah. the Summer of Punk. Both of them had their WWE titles after Punk walked, quote-unquote, 
left with the WWE Championship, put it in his fridge, in his refrigerator, and all that good stuff. And then John Cena took a big old crap on Rey Mysterio on Raw <laughs> to become the WWE Champ. Hey, Rey Mysterio, you just won this grueling tournament to become the WWE Champion. What are you going to do now? Job out to John Cena? That's right. I'm still trying to figure out why that was called the Summer of Punk. He didn't really do anything significant, like except for those two things. Because he feuded with John I Cena, mean, it, he was like he because he came into his own. Then he dropped the the pipe bomb. He had the Money in the Bank moment. He had the SummerSlam moment. There, he was like the most talked about thing that summer. So that's why. But anyway, what what's weird is they also had the quote Summer of Punk when he was in Ring of Honor and they. He signed his WWE contract on the Ring of Honor title, and they thought he was going to be losing in his last match, but he didn't lose. He ended up winning the Ring of Honor title and then went through the rest of the summer as the champion. So, but anyway, moving on. Numero, f uh, what's five in Spanish? Cinco. There you go. Uh, figured I'd ask. Uh, Stone Cold Steve Austin defends the WWE title against The Undertaker 1998. There's that. Back them back to back matches we talked about. He deserved it. Yeah, after the crap he had to suffer in the previous. That years. kid worked hard. He deserved it. Uh, he put in. Uh, he he talked about paying your dues in August, man. But what was really due? What did he do to make? To, I don't know. <laughs> what did he do to have to pay his dues? <laughs> yeah. Hell if I know. Or well, at he, least those dues. I don't know, but by God, he did. <laughs> Man, but yeah, so that's a, uh, the second Undertaker sighting we've got on this list. Number four, it's Jeff Hardy defending the w, the World Heavyweight Championship against CM Punk TLC match 2009. Second Punk match I got oh, on yeah. there. That was one of my favorite CM Punk rivalries of his whole WWE tenure because it was real. These guys really disliked each other, and it's because... Jeff Hardy had substance abuse issues and Punk was super straight edge. So they were like polar opposites. Number three. I'm better than you. Yeah. Number three, I guess technically this wasn't the main event, but it was. John Cena defends the WWE title against Daniel Bryan 2013. Man, that was one of the better matches I've ever seen from Cena. Yeah, it was fantastic. Both of these guys had their working boots on. Daniel Bryan finally won the WWE title, only to be squashed by Orton, well, by Triple H and Orton uh, right afterwards. Uh, I forgot to mention that. Triple H was a special guest referee in this, but it was a damn good match. Uh, you can go back on WWE Network in the archives and check that one out. My best Roll Tide. <laughs> yeah, that's my best Conrad impression. Uh, number two... Uh, the Undertaker versus Edge, 2008. Hell in a cell. Sweaty cell. What the hell? This was, wasn't that the one where uh, Edge got sent straight to hell? Yep. My God, he sent him straight to hell. <laughs> and uh, wow. man, that, that match was phenomenal, I gotta say. I mean, well, duh, Undertaker and Edge, but still. And number one... Bret Hart defends the Intercontinental Championship against British Bulldog Davy Boy Smith, 1992, in Wembley Stadium. Well, that, the main event was technically Nails and Virgil, but... Okay. Shut up. Oh, man. But, yeah, that, that match was phenomenal. And if you believe the Bret Hart story, Bulldog was hella out of it on drugs and no sleep. And he forgot the whole match... And Brett had to walk him through it. If that's true, man, one, kudos to Brett. Two, kudos to Bulldog for looking so damn good while he's really out of it. Uh, I, see, I suspect Brett may be talking himself up a little bit, but... Whoa, oh are, my. You, are you trying to say that Brett Hart puts himself over at the expense of other people? You watch no, your damn mouth. That's not what I said. How dare you say that? Oh, wait, that's what I said? Oh, I'm sorry. Never mind. Uh, four out of ten. I just, well, it was over, it was overseas. Dude. So, I mean, it's close to Japan. Not close enough, damn it. Four out of ten. Side note on that, I just, I remember an interview with Brett when he said, uh, 
Oh, Davey winning, you know, he thought it was his moment, but it was really my moment. Oh, my God. Because I'm I moving know. on. Yeah. Like, piece of crap. I, how dare you? Like, he just won the Intercontinental title on the main event of the second biggest show of the year in his home country. Shut up. Yep. Whatever. But anyway, that's my list, bro. Uh, we're going to take a quick commercial commercial break, I guess, to let you know about another podcast here on the Drama City Productions Network. When we come back, we will have Impact News, I would, which is your favorite. Big news. I'm, from, I'm shaking. Yeah, big news from uh, big league news from elsewhere in the wrestling world. And I'm not overhyping it. We really do have some big news. Oh, we're going to wrap it up with some MMA news. And then, of course, Greg's list, bro. And then we will wrap this podcast up with Kyle and I giving our predictions for this weekend at NXT TakeOver Brooklyn 4 and SummerSlam 2018. We'll be right back. Drama City Productions presets. Hey, it's Ben here, host of the Regular Stories Podcast, a podcast where I interview interesting people about their lives. These are not celebrities. They're not the elite. These are regular people, and these are their stories. You can follow us on Facebook at Regular Stories and on Instagram at Regular Stories. We are everywhere that you can get a podcast. We are on iTunes, Google Play, Stitcher, TuneIn, just about everywhere else. Look up Regular Stories Podcast. And we are back to discuss Greg's favorite thing in the world besides HCW. It is Impact Wrestling News, baby. It actually comes number three behind HCW and Naked Midian, but whatever. Oh, well, excuse me. I, I, I forgot. You it's are, okay. It's okay. It happens. You are the president of the Naked Midian fan club, so, you know. That's we have right. a t-shirt that says so. <laughs> yeah. Uh, we only, win. We only have one Impact Wrestling News story this week. I know you're disappointed. I am, but I got a written. <laughs> But it is kind of apropos. Um, Impact Wrestling viewership dropped 32% this past week. They posted their third lowest viewership since debuting on Pop TV. I don't know when Pop for that. Wow. That, uh, yeah, I just, mm. All right, I don't really know what to say about that. <laughs> Moving on to more important things. Uh, here it is. How is it just now being the lowest rating? A third lowest. All right. So that means they've done worse than this, believe it or not. So it's not the worst thing we've ever seen. Nope, but it's damn close. I get okay. Well, I guess we should move on to the news from elsewhere, bro. Real quick, I like how it's WWE, TNA, and elsewhere. Yeah. Well, because there's, I mean, there's not enough news, you know, like from each federation separately it's kind of annoying to be like well this is from this and this is from that and blah 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 so i just kind of throw it all together and make one large chunk of news bro i like chunking my news up well leave it alone i've already hit my quota of perverted things in this week so yep uh so we're not going to mention randy never mind anyway um <laughs> that's you yeah i ain't touching that that's all on you well, you don't have to touch it. You have to touch his hand after he touched it. I'm sorry. <laughs> Can you shut up? <laughs> All right, I'm done. I'm done. Maybe. I don't know. It might come up later. Giggity. Randy Orton was done when he put his... All right, anyways, move on. I was going to say it might come up later like every SummerSlam, but that's... Anyway, moving on. Um, <laughs> It didn't come up a couple of years ago when he faced Brock, but anyway. Uh, Ring of Honor and... Ring of Honor slash New Japan's G1 Supercard from Madison Square Garden tickets sold out on day one of sale. According to Ring of Honor COO Joe Koff, real name, tickets were already 60% sold from pre-sale. There's plenty of speculation going around that with tickets moving so well, WWE will ramp up efforts to sign bigger independent stars who might otherwise appear on that show. That includes the likes of Kenny Omega and the Young Bucks. There's a lot. Oh, man. Can we just put it out there that the reason this sold out so quickly is because all those people are dedicated to going to New York for WrestleMania as it is. Well, that's okay. why it's sold out. Okay, and that's well, I'm going to stick straight to that. Well, okay. Nothing's going to change my opinion. I I I get that, and and you're not 
completely wrong here. However, uh, one, there's a lot of meat on this story that we could talk about. Uh, the, but I said this on Twitter uh, before. I, I said before anybody, because I shared the story, and I said before anybody says anything and, well, this and that, and it sold out because of this, or it wouldn't have sold out because of that, and blah, blah, blah. I get it. Okay, you can come up with every excuse in the book, which may or may not be valid. However, regardless of the reason, they're not named WWE, and they sold out Madison Square Garden. That, in itself, is huge. It's historic, one way or another. It doesn't matter the reason why, but they sold it out. They're a wrestling organ well, technically two, two wrestling organizations, and they sold out Madison Square Garden. That hasn't well, been first done. Of all, I don't think they sold it out. I think it's like they took some seats away, so they didn't jam pack it. And well, they they sold all the seats that they were offering. Yeah, but now let's go on the secondary market and see what's up for grabs. People are just getting them to poach them. Well, so, some people, yes, but regardless, and same thing. I mean, they did the same thing for All In. A lot of people bought tickets that they weren't ever planning on using. They just bought them so that they could jack up the price. Yeah, so and sell I mean, them. I don't, I didn't really call that a sellout. I mean, a legit sellout. I mean, it is, but like, people are doing it to make money off of them, and some of those tickets won't even get used. So yeah, but I you mean, could say the same thing. You and I went to a couple NXT takeovers, and well, well, I won't say the one in the Barclays because that one did sell out legit. I, I didn't really see any empty seats. But when you and I went to the um, Smoothie King Center there for uh, for NXT. There were quite a few empty seats there as well that, you know, people poached them and jacked up the price and nobody bought them. Yeah, that's so, what I'm saying. So but at the same time, it was still a sellout. I mean, regardless, you know, and, and yeah, the, I think the secondary market bull crap it really. But I'm saying this it. isn't like the 80s. You know, people bought all those tickets to the garden to go see Hogan or or uh, Bruno. You know, they bought those with the explicit intent. These ones sold with the intent to get more money for them. Yeah. The marks who will undoubtedly be there. So, I mean, you know, I'm not trying to take anything away, but I'm just saying it's not a coincidence that that show sold out and they're piggybacking on WrestleMania. So, it just well, needs to be said. Well, they need, I'm sticking to that. Well, of yeah. course they're piggybacking on WrestleMania to an extent, but at the same time, it's still Madison Square Garden. It's still a company not named WWE, and they still sold out. And yeah, I mean... Because of WWE being there. Well, that's that's a big reason for it, sure. But then, I mean, and you've seen this, well, and I've I mean, seen it we too. Have, we sell out almost every show here, and the Cow Palace couldn't sell out because they weren't piggybacking on WWE. And this is New Japan, and we always sell out shows here. Okay? Yeah. So, I mean, that goes to show you right there, at my point. Well, they sold out in this, L.A., and they weren't piggybacking off of anything. Well, yeah, but that was a small-ass arena. Yeah. I mean, I mean, we're talking about two arenas that hold 12,000, 15,000 people. Well, we can hate on this all we want, but at the same time, it's still, it's a smart I'm business strategy. I'm, just, I'm simply just saying that these idiot fanboys, oh, we sold, no, you didn't. WWE sold it out because people are going to be there. Well. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, I mean. I mean, that's the reason. The, the biggest group of those people there, yeah, are going to be there for SummerSlam, so they're, or I mean uh, WrestleMania, so they're also going to go, you know, to that. However, and you've seen it. You and Ramon seen it firsthand, and I've seen it on Twitter, or whatever. A lot of people, they're like, either they live there, because that's it. I mean, New York's a huge market. So they live there, and they, they're going explicitly to that show. Or they're, oddly enough, like I said, you, you and Ramon have seen this, and oddly enough, I've seen people do this too, where they're like, oh, I'm, going to, I'm going to New York just because I want to be a part of the show. It's huge. And they legit are going to New York for this. I'm not saying that's a majority. I'm not kidding anybody. You know, I'm kidding myself with this. I'm just saying there are that small minority of people who are going to New York for this show. So, yeah, but it could just be a one and done show and like, you know, everybody's got everything else going. Well, yeah, I, well, they're not going to have like a whole weekend worth of stuff, but I'm just saying. And regardless, you know, and I'm and we can, you know, make every excuse in the book. But still, at the end of the day. They sold out the garden, and it's no. I'm not. I'm not knocking that, and good for them. I'm happy they did. It's going to give make WWE work harder. But I'm simply saying it's not a coincidence that they're piggybacking on WrestleMania. Well, of course, and that's not. why it's sold out. 
I, any any idiot that doesn't think that's that says that's not a reason they're like they're full of it and they're they're kidding themselves oh, of I course that's a reason of well of course it's a freaking reason like i that's that's a no freaking doubt i mean if it follows WWE or date with destiny it's gonna sell out it's just the oh way it is oh my god so. just ignoring that last one um but yeah this is it's the biggest wrestling week in you know all year you and i, I saw it i'm pissed that they are going against NXT because I'm not choosing it over NXT. No way in hell. Yeah. If they would have put it against the Hall of Fame, I would have chosen that over the Hall of Fame. That's the part I'm mad about the most. Yeah. Because I, I would have had those tickets day one if they wouldn't have done that. Yeah. You would have had to sit there on, uh, like, he would, you would have to be, be on there at, like, 10 a.m. Well, that would have been, like, 7 a.m. for you to get them oh, tickets. I would have been. Yeah. But, I yeah. mean, I'm looking at them right now, and there's really good ones for, yeah. There's, a crap ton of tickets on StubHub and on Seeky. Shocker. I mean, I mean, I'm not really shocked whatsoever about that because I I knew a lot of these tickets were going to be bought just to be poached. Um, I've seen a lot of people. That's pathetic too, though. I mean, I know I hate that. It's, it's just, you're screwing other people out of out of an opportunity to witness history, you know, or witness something mm. they actually want to see. You think that's bad? You see Golden State Warrior tickets? It's it's ridiculous. Oh my god! I mean, we're sold out for like five years straight. Like, going holy hell! Into the future. Yeah, the, the wait list for our our season tickets is almost as long as the Green Bay Packers. And like, I was about they to mention that every freaking they raise every freaking price on stuff up. I hate it. Mm. Like the nosebleed section is like one hundred and forty dollars. <sighs> like it's pretty dirty. Yeah, that's that's pathetic. Like, come on now. I look at the nosebleed sections in the garden. They're charging. 135 cheapest right now. Jeez. There's no way in hell those sold for 135 dollars. So it's pathetic. Yeah, that's that's so dumb. Well, I have seen also an, uh something about you know with all in. The thing is, they sold those tickets so early and everybody bought them up really quickly. A lot of people are saying it's like, well, having to turn around and sell my ticket because you know something came up. I mean, that stuff happens when you buy tickets, you know, months and months in advance. You know, sometimes things come up, so. I don't see a lot of the, uh, yeah, there are. Yeah, there are, yeah. there are quite a few, and I mean, and sometimes those people that put them up there, they're trying to see if they can get any bites, and if nobody buys them, they'll go themselves, you know, but that's not frequent, but it happens. I don't know. It's pretty sad. I know, I hate it. I mean, we're talking Star Trek convention sad. Oh my gosh, what the hell? Uh, but the last part of that story um, is, you know, they said WWE's ramping up their their efforts to. I heard that about All In too. That's why they were trying to lock up Rey Mysterio because he's scheduled for All In, and you know that used to be a thing where Vince McMahon like was like, oh, honor your dates, and you know if you're booked for something, do it, and then come with a. Now it's like, no, if you want to sign this contract, you you come on now because. I don't. I don't get it though. WWE has nothing to worry about. If anybody thinks that New Japan and Ring of Honor and you know whatever the hell else is going to compete with WWE, they're sad and they're sadly mistaken. But I think it's WWE's pissed off because for years they have had nothing resembling competition, and now you know they're uh, the new guys. You know, well, I guess technically the new kids in town are selling out arenas, which nobody's done in the U.S. since WCW shut down. I, I, I don't get the reasoning for it. I, I, what I don't get about it is they're not doing it at a rapid rate. It's not like they're selling out every Monday night like Raw does. So. Yeah, I, I don't... <sighs> but apparently this is, like, really going up Vince's ass sideways, you know, with a red-hot poker, and it's just like, Why? Like what? Oh, is, it is it is the garden too. You gotta take that into account. That part, okay, I get. But the all in show, apparently, he was all pissed off about. It's like, who cares? It's not even an arena that they run. So I just, I don't get it. Um, he's gonna eventually poke Omega, poach Omega and the Bucks. Us, so whatever. Well, from what I and people are comparing them, they're like, man, this sounds like WCW because that's what WCW used to stockpile talent that they never freaking used. And I said, yeah, but the difference here is w, like, WWE has no repercussions of if they sign somebody 
and just send them to the performance center and not use them or keep them down in NXT and not use them. They have no repercussions. WCW uh, had to keep shelling out money for talent that they weren't using or using incorrectly and it eventually caught up with them. It's not it's not going to matter for WWE. There's nobody else. So, yeah, I just WWE doesn't have to worry about consequences with this kind of stuff. So it's different. And, well, yeah, it's, I have them and you don't. That's it. Yeah, and it. I mean, it's sad in my opinion, but you know, I mean, it's 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 a fact. Yeah, yeah, you can say that, but no one forced that guy to put their pen to paper. So yeah, well, I mean, you know, that's the number one thing you should take into account. Oh Don't yeah, well, straight to WWE took him or the guy signed the contract. So blame him more than WWE. And he, it was well, not like don't, was not forced to do it. I don't blame these people for. I mean, if if your whole thing is look, I want to make a lot of money in the business. You know, it doesn't really matter to me about the whole you know winning titles and whatever the hell else. Then sure, yeah, by all means, you know, yeah, get get it while it's good, man. If WWE's offering you a check with a whole lot of zeros at the end of it. By God, you can only take so many bumps in your in your life. But still, I it just I don't know. Whatever, it is what it is. Uh, but yeah, speaking of all in, uh, it will air live at 7 p.m. Eastern, which is 4 p.m. Eastern or, or 4 p.m. Pacific for uh, for you out there, Greg. Uh, it will air live at 7 p.m. Eastern on pay per view, Fight TV, and the Honor Club here in America. And rumor has it it will Good air. Luck watching it, that means. Yeah, if it's on pay per view and fight, then I assume it's going to be good. On the Honor Club, not so much. Uh, there's also a rumor that in Japan it will air live on New Japan World, so uh, you can watch it in the Land of the Rising Sun. A pre-show called All In Zero Hour will air at 6 p.m. Eastern, 3 p.m. Pacific. On WGN America, which uh, I wish I could go to uh, the uh, block party with Flip Gordon, all outs. <laughs> That's hilarious. How much you want to bet they did that specifically so that he could name his block party that? <laughs> and he's technically booked, so there you go. Yep, he's going to be hashtag all out. But yeah, I was going to say hands up if you remember that G- WGN America is a channel. I have that channel. I'm sure I do, too, because I have the top package with Spectrum. Um, <laughs> uh, but I I, I, that? I would have to do a search to find out what the frick that channel even is, because I don't know. But, yeah, so I will try to be watching that live. Uh, last all out, st- or, God, uh, all in story that I have uh, Kenny Omega versus Pentagon Jr. is expected to be announced for All In at some point in the very near future. PW Insider says that Omega versus Rey Mysterio was planned at one point, but that was obviously changed. Quick, get another masked luchador. Pentagon. They come a dime a dozen. <laughs> Pentagon, what are you doing? Nothing? Get in there with Kenny. <laughs> Man, not Ray Phoenix, Pentagon Jr. All right. Which, I mean, he's more over. He used to be over, bro. And when he was not over, I cried, bro. What the hell? But yeah, so Kenny Omega versus Pentagon Jr. Expect that to be a thing soon, possibly, for All In. Kind of a odd matchup, but whatever, right? What did Kenny tell him? It's like, I'll only do the show if I get to face a luchador. Yes. That's a weird thing to have in your contract. But whatever. MLW story, I just wanted to, because this is a local boy in... You'll recognize the name. MLW has signed Brian Pillman Jr. to a long-term deal. Have you okay. Have you seen Brian Pillman Jr.? No, we were going to at a local APW show, but he got hurt and had to pull out. So he's a big, uh, big kid. So he's like, I mean, not height-wise, but like bulk-wise, he's like twice the size of Brian, I would say, or at least as big. I mean, he do- he doesn't look as lean as Brian, but he's He's a, a thick dude, but he he has the same hair as his dad, dresses like his dad. He he uh at my radio station he actually came in for an interview one day and was wearing uh his dad's Hollywood blondes vest. It's pretty cool. I'm a little jealous. Right? 
Uh, by the way, um, I just saw on Twitter, apparently, New Japan announced that the Tokyo Dome show, for the first time, will not be held uh, on January 2nd. It'll be held on January 4th, which is a Friday. So, apparently, I would assume they're moving it to correspond with the weekend. So, I think that's smart. I think it's kind of dumb just to plop the show in the middle of the week. I don't know. Yeah, it, I never got that either. It's like, who the hell is going to stay up on a Wednesday night at 2 a.m. to watch? You know, I mean, yeah, Wrestle Kingdom, whatever. It doesn't matter. Guys with the look, bro, they will definitely stay up. Yeah, well, and if you guys want the look, bro, definitely go to redbubble.com forward slash people forward slash pod rest society. Pick yourself up uh, some podcast wrestling society swag. You can even get wait a... for your call from TJ. <laughs> wait for me to slip into your DMs. And you can even get a T-shirt that says the look, bro. So, yeah, get uh, get on that hot that hotness. This one isn't really a news story. It kind of is. I just it was funny. So I wanted to share it with you. I guess after a match in Lucha Underground, Johnny Mundo proposed to Taya Valkyrie (laughs) in Lucha Underground. He did it in the Macho Man voice. And then when she said yes, he picked her up on one shoulder and walked around like Macho Man did with Liz. Aren't they already married? No, they're engaged. Or, well, I guess they're engaged now. But, yeah, they were just dating. I could have swore I saw pictures of the wedding. Uh, I don't think they're married, no. I mean, um, not not that I've seen, anyway. But, I don't know. Hey, you mean to tell me that wrestling is a work? I don't know. Next thing you're going to tell me is John Cena and Nikki Bella didn't really get engaged at live at WrestleMania. No, that was real. I was there. I saw it. Yeah. Hey. I saw it, therefore it is. But I had to confirm it with Dave Meltzer first. I should ask him Dave. when I had my check out next to him. <laughs> and then tried to shake his hand. And then when he didn't... Whoa, at- whoa, 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 I didn't do all that. Well, and then when he refused to shake your hand, you should have been like, are you big leaguing me right now? Do I need to tell Vince and Steph? Uh, also, going back, they were married on June 1st, 2018, so I don't know what the hell that story was. Wow. So they got engaged for fake. Cool. Um... Well, Unlike Cena and Nikki, so... Well, I mean, if you want to get... If, I guess they full-on ripped off Macho Man and Elizabeth because when they got engaged in w, on uh, WWF, they were already married. So, <laughs> I guess that's just a thing. Uh, whatever. Last story I have from elsewhere in the wrestling world. Colt Cabana files a lawsuit against CM Punk over legal fees. Cabana is seeking... $200,000 in general damages and $1 million in punitive and exemplary damages. CM Punk really has okay. no friends. Nope. That's just, man, he's burned every bridge ever. How do you get Colt Cabana mad at you, man? Apparently. Oh, I seem pretty cool in that elevator. <laughs> yeah. You get, you get Colt Cabana mad at you apparently by getting him dragged into court. Yeah. That would do, that would do it, it to me. me, too. Yeah. But anyway, that's enough of the news from elsewhere. Uh, you ready for some MMA news, bro? Bro. All right, this is the last bit of news we have. Let's move on to the MMA world, bro. All right. This first story is the only one not UFC, and the only reason I'm mentioning it is because it's such a weird story. Uh, the PFL, Professional Fighters League, has a new has new investors that are investing twenty eight million dollars. Uh, the investors include Kevin Hart, Mark Burnett, and Tony Robbins. So, a guy, show guy, a comedian, and a positive speaker, and they're all yeah. going to get together for a fight promotion. Wait, who's Mark? <laughs> who is Mark Burnett? I think he's the guy that created like Will Fortune, all that, isn't he? I don't know. I was that's the only name I didn't recognize. Um I thought, man, I could be wrong. I could be real wrong on that, but I guess he is a British television producer. Uh he's the chairman of MGM Worldwide Television Group. Um like I mean, it wasn't he was he invented some game shows. So I know that part. He, yeah. he he is the producer of five uh network shows, including The Voice, Survivor, Shark Tank, Kevin Hart. Oh, reality, okay. Yeah. Kevin Hart's TKO and Jamie Foxx's Beat Shazam, whatever the hell that is. Uh, and also the cable series The Contender on Epics. 
Oh, Andy, Andy, uh, he's the executive producer of Lucha Underground. <laughs> uh, whatever. So that guy. Wow. That's a. That, could, could you think of a more random group of people to invest in a, a, a crap ass second rate MMA <laughs> league? You said Tony Robbins, man. I know. Of all the people, that's the weirdest one. Oh, my God. I mean, I don't know why. I guess I can see Kevin Hart, maybe, you know, because he's a celebrity. I, I, mean, I guess he's uh, into boxing, but if you can't get into boxing, I guess, you know, that, uh, you know, so MMA, whatever the hell. <laughs> but, uh, and I could see, you know, Mark Burnett makes sense. Tony Robbins, though, like, he's a freaking, like, like you said, like a, a motivational some... speaker. He's going to give some positive talk to everyone when they lose. I guess. He's going to give them all a free copy of his latest, like, audio book of his latest book or something, I guess. I, I don't know. That's just, it's a strange hodgepodge of people. But whatever. That's uh, moving on to real news from the MMA world. Let's go to UFC. Real. <laughs> wow. Uh Joseph Benavidez versus Ray Borg has been announced for UFC Denver. Yeah, that's gonna that's gonna be good. I don't know who. I you, think who, it could. I think it could potentially decide who the next challenger is for TJ Dillashaw. So, ah, nice. Well, uh, I've heard of Joseph Benavidez. I've not heard of Ray Borg. Is he good? Yeah, he's pretty good. Yeah. All right. He's one of the top uh, flyweights in the world. Well, I would assume, I mean... Actually, I, I didn't mean T.J. Dillashaw, by the way, and for Henry Cejudo. Oh, right. Oh, I was going to say, isn't Cejudo... Uh, I, I thought he was taking on Dillashaw next. I don't know if that's even going to happen. They haven't confirmed it yet. In my opinion, Cejudo hasn't earned the right... I mean, he just won the damn belt, and then he's calling out the dude from the next weight class. Like, bro, d like defend it once or twice, and then we'll talk. I don't know. Maybe that's just me. And I, I don't think the, the Henry Cejudo versus TJ Dillashaw fight has the, the allure that Dillashaw and Mighty Mouse would have. I, am I wrong? No, we all still deserve that fight. Yeah, I just... I, whatever the hell. Uh, last story I have. This one is exciting to me. Dana White is eyeing a George St. Pierre return at UFC 231 at the Scotiabank Arena in Toronto on December 8th. So, mm, Toronto, why? Yeah, I know. I was like, oh, well, uh, you're going to bring him back in Toronto, huh? Hmm, must need a sellout. That's like putting Bret Hart on the card for WWE. <laughs> like, you're guaranteed to sell out. Or, oddly enough, Hulk Hogan. <laughs> uh, that's Montreal, but yeah. Uh, Toronto loves Hogan. They sold out the... Yeah, but in the context of what you think you said, it's Montreal, I'm pretty sure. Yeah. But yeah, so Toronto, uh, December 8th, UFC 231, possibly a return for GSP, but I... Who, we good. who the hell do you think he would fight? Nick Diaz. Mm, yeah. Well, isn't Nick Diaz, like, suspended, like, indefinitely or some crap? He's off suspension now. He just doesn't want to fight. Oh. Uh, I'd think. rather... I'd rather go back and smoke my weed, bro. Whatever. Dude, when my weed flushed down the toilet, I cried, bro. What the hell? Oh, man. What What was the, the Vince Russo meme I sent to you where it was like, I showed you my I showed you my pole, now you show me your swerve, bro. <laughs> oh. Oh, man. And then you were like, well, you sent me that. <laughs> <laughs> or you were like, I can't unsee that, or something like that. Nope. Oh, man. But anyway, Greg, uh, you uh, you got your list ready, bro? Bro, it's been ready. Oh, hell yeah. Let's get ready for... <laughs> the list, bro! All right, what you, what you got, bro? Uh, I got a list. Oh, yeah? Do you have a freaking list, bro? I list, okay? All right, number How 10. How much do you even list, bro? At least 10 a week. <laughs> wow. That is true. <laughs> number 10, I said Austin Undertaker from 1998. Wow, 10. All right. Yeah. Uh, well, yeah, now, it makes you, from there. 
No, I was going to say now I'm anxious to see what you, what your other ones are. Uh, number nine, I said Undertaker and Bret Hart from. Oh yeah, uh, Hart. That's like the, the third time we've mentioned Hart and Soul recently. <laughs> it was a uh, yeah, it was a good it was a good event. Yeah, no, although no, I think the most memorable part is Austin damn near being crippled, but. Uh, yeah, that uh, had. Let's just say that event had its ups and downs. <laughs> <laughs> Mainly the down part. Okay. Yeah. Wow. Straight to his ass with his head. Why? I'll never get it. Yeah, and, uh, and, and Austin said he thought he was joking when he told him that. Because he was yeah. like, going to your knees, right? No, I'm going to my ass. He was like, but seriously, you, like, you're dropping to your knees? He's like, no, I'm dropping to my ass. And, like, he thought, I'm like, I would have flat out told him, it's like, if you drop, like, I swear to God, I'm gonna kill you if you do, if you do that crap. We talking about damn near killed him. Oh, I know. It's sad. Uh, but yeah, it's uh, it's kind of funny. You've had already two Undertaker sightings on your list there, Nelly Brotado. <laughs> wow. <laughs> uh, uh, number eight, CM Punk, Jeff Hardy, ladder match, 2009. TLC match, bro. But yeah, that was great. That one also. The Undertaker returned at the end, so that's three in a row with The Undertaker. Yeah, holy hell. Yeah. Well, it, like you said, he eventually made up for those terrible summer slams. <laughs> uh, number seven, Randy Orton, John Cena, 2007. Yeah, I almost added that one to my list, but I'm like, dude, there's just been so many other damn matches. And I, uh, in the last list, bro, I added a Cena-Orton match that didn't, uh, didn't main event, so... Oh, yeah, that's right. Man, how many times uh, have they freaking faced each other throughout their careers? Like, holy hell. A couple hundred. <laughs> yeah, I'd say. Number six, I said Edge and Cena from 2006. Oh, man, I forgot about that one. Yeah, that was, that. that's another one of them rivalries. Like, every time those two touched, it was just fantastic stuff. Which is good. Big league Brotang clan. We're building a wall around Boston, and Canada's paying for it. What the hell? <sighs> I don't. I don't know what to say That's about that one. C- Cena and Edge. There you go. Yeah. Um, I get it. <laughs> number five, Undertaker and Edge, Hell in a Cell, two thousand eight. Man, five, and that's the second Edge sighting we've had. Hmm. And technically, the fourth Undertaker. <laughs> yep. A lot of Taker, a <laughs> lot of Edge. Oh, yeah. Number four, Rock and Brock 2000. Oh, yeah. 2002, without a doubt, undisputedly, greatest SummerSlam ever. Yep. Like, when There's you, a something about SummerSlam in New York where it's always good. When you, like, when you start the card with Kurt Angle versus Rey Mysterio, and it just goes up yeah. from there. Like, good lord. Yep. I will say that was the like the worst freaking singlet Kurt Angle's ever wore. Yep. It looked like a candy striper in a hospital. Yeah, exactly. Uh, For those of you that don't remember, he it was like the white and uh it was like white uh, and red if pinstripes. You if you if you don't remember the toy is out, so you can go pick that up. Oh, who the hell is gonna buy that? He looked like well, he was wearing a basic pa- to be fair, but Yeah, but he he looked like he was wearing pajamas. Like I know. <laughs> ugh. I liked his red, white, and blue camo one way better. Yeah. Oh, if that was like the best one he's ever had, that was the month before at Vengeance, and then he goes to the worst he's ever had. <laughs> wow. What I a know. jump. <laughs> I know. That's freaking crazy. But all right, what up next there, Kurt Brobane? Wow. Well, uh, Getting him in today. Orton and what's his name in 2004? <laughs> Orton and Stevie Richards, 2004. Got it. For those of you that don't get it, that was a meme for, like, ever, like, online, where, like, they kept replacing, like, uh, first it was, first they were, were replacing Chris Benoit, and then they were replacing Hulk Hogan with Stevie Richards. I don't get it, but whatever. Uh, <laughs> uh, number but, two, Daniel Bryan, John Cena, 2013. Hell yeah. Technically the main event, technically not the main event, but yeah, fantastic match. And then I have the same number. You, Bret Hart and British Bulldog. Oh yeah, that seems to be everybody's number one. Because I went through a couple. Because I like to compare lists uh, for ideas and whatnot. 
and I was looking online, and it seemed like everybody that had a top 10 SummerSlam match list, that was always number one. And, Why not? Yeah, I think it was, honestly, I think uh, the crowd had a lot to do with it, because the crowd was, like, beyond hot for that match. I mean, for obvious reasons, but just huge, big league. So It was the number two match on the card, Virgil Nails, number one, greatest SummerSlam match ever. Well, you got that right, bro and Wilson. <laughs> got in another one. Had to get it in before the end. But good list, bro. Well, I will say Kyle and I, uh, you and I are wrapping up. Kyle and I will be coming at you with the next segment to give you our predictions for this weekend in New York. Tell you what uh, what we predict for NXT TakeOver Brooklyn and SummerSlam 2018. And, of course, I will be trying to keep up with you and Ramon to try to get some uh, feedback of what it was like there live. And also, you will be at the Raw after, right? Uh, Yeah. Okay, cool. Not SmackDown, though. Yeah. Well, you and I uh, will keep in touch about it, and I will try to stay off of social media at first because I'm probably not going to be able to watch live. However, uh, <laughs> that's it might be a little easier because I'm going to be on vacation to be on a social media blackout for a couple days. So mm. we'll uh, we'll do that. But anyway, let's uh, let's hope for the best for uh, NXT and SummerSlam. I I'm thinking good thoughts, and we may see even if we don't see Matt Riddle in the main event of NXT Takeover, we're probably going to see him in the crowd in a suit, no shoes, waving to the camera, saying "bro, bro, 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 bro." Says "bro" more than we do, and that's a lot of bros. I, I got a feeling though, this SummerSlam is going to break the bank, though. <laughs> Shut up! Just my God. Uh, I was going to say... It's, uh, it's going to stay alive for a while. Sorry. Yeah. I will say, I think that Matt Riddle is not really the king of bros. The real king of bros, obviously, is Vince Russo. I mean, how how could anybody be more of a bro than, than him? He says bro every other uh, word. I still think it's Barney Stinson, but whatever. What the hell? All right. Well, anyway, thank you for joining me, Greg. It was fun. And we will be talking with Greg in dos weeks. Well, actually, no, we're talking with you next week because we got a watch along episode. I will fill you in more about it at the end of the next segment. What you can expect next week on the podcast, bros. Later. Later. Small Town Mentality Podcast with your host, Ben. A podcast about nothing and everything. A podcast where we get together with friends, drink beer, and see where the conversation takes us. We don't edit. We don't care what people say. It's small town people with a small town mentality. It gets offensive at times. Lots of swearing and a whole lot of not caring. Available everywhere you get podcasts. You can find us on Twitter at STMPod, on Instagram at STMPodcast, and on Facebook at Small Town Mentality Pod. We'll see you there. All right, we are back, and uh, it's a little different quality now, I'm sure. I'm using a completely different microphone and computer, and Kyle is coming in differently than Greg was earlier. So, uh, But yeah, long story short, I got Kyle with me. What's up, Kyle? Not much here. Looking forward to summer time this Sunday. Yeah, I'm looking forward to it. It turns out I may be able to watch NXT TakeOver live, which I didn't think I was going to do, but I will not be able to watch SummerSlam live. So maybe uh, I'll take my headphones with me. Maybe after the wife falls asleep that night, I might be able to pop on the uh, pop on the phone and, and watch some of it while she's sleeping. But we'll uh, we'll see. Or, you know, maybe during her three hours of getting her hair and makeup and clothes ready the next day, I'll, I'll sit and watch it. But, uh, yeah, I'm, I don't know about you, man, but I'm really looking forward to both of these shows. I'm not going to be able to see TakeOver, at least live, so I don't eh. really know how much I'm looking forward to that one. So. Well, the show itself, I mean, should still be 
pretty darn good. Um, you know, let's run down that real quick here. Uh, give our predictions for the weekend, uh, like uh, like we always do. All right. Um, well, I don't know the exact order of all the matches here, but this is what you know. I'm just gonna run down as I see fit. This is an interesting one. It's uh, Velveteen Dream takes on EC3 in a singles match. I think this has a potential again to be another show stealing match for uh, you know both of these guys, especially Velveteen Dream. And I love EC3. Uh, I want to see how they work together. What what, uh, what do you got uh, prediction wise for this one? I'll go with Velveteen Dream. Uh, yeah, I mean, I don't know what what direction they really want to go. I, I haven't been keeping up with NXT lately uh, too much. I don't know about you, but uh, I, I don't know. I, I'm i probably going to go with Velveteen as well, but I, I would like to see EC3 get a win. I'm not going to lie. Uh, we got Shayna Baszler defending the NXT Women's Championship against Kyrie Sane. Who you got for this one? I'm going to say Kyrie Sane gets it. So I've, I've been waiting for her to, you know, be in this spot after, uh, you know, winning the May Young Classic last year. So I think this is the time to do it. Yeah, really. Uh, I, I think it's it's uh, it's time, and you know, I think I don't know. I mean, I guess you could keep Shayna down there for a little while longer, but. I don't know. I think she could come up, and if they switch her baby face, you know, they could put her with with Ronda. Just like they don't have to be a tag team per se, but just like an association, you know. So uh, I think I think that would work well, and then they can bring the other four horsewomen in, or you know, that that's also an option. They could keep uh, Shayna down in NXT and bring in the other three horsewomen, or sorry, the other two horsewomen that are training at the Performance Center, bring them up to NXT and have three of the four horsewomen down in NXT. So, I don't know. And then Shayna chases Kyrie for the belt. But, yeah, I'm going to... I think I'm going to go with Kyrie Sane here. I think it's I think it's her time to win. We have uh, Adam Cole, baby, defending the NXT North American Championship against Ricochet. Who you calling here? I'm going to say Adam Cole retains. Um, I actually, I'm going to go against you on this one. I'm going to say I think Ricochet is going to win it. And okay. I'll tell you why after this next prediction. Uh, this next match is going to be the Undisputed Era, Kyle O'Reilly and Roderick Strong defending their ch- uh, NXT Tag Team Championships, which I didn't even realize they won back. Against Mustache Mountain, Tyler Bate, and Trent Seven, the former tag team champions. I'll ask you first who who uh, who you got for this. I'll say Undisputed Era. See, I'm gonna go with Mustache Mountain on this because I'm gonna th- I'm gonna say Cole and Undisputed Era gets called up after SummerSlam. Mm. I'd like to see that. Yeah, I think it, I think it would be good. I think they. I think it would be a good change for them. I, I, I don't really... They're not getting any younger, and I don't really know what else they need to do down in NXT, personally. Uh, for all of you at home, if you're hearing a little bit of buzzing, uh, it's a little bit of backfeed. Sorry about that. Just, I'm, I'm trying to keep most of it out of the show, but if you're hearing some of it, I apologize. Um, But yeah, so I think the Undisputed Era could do well up on the main roster. I'd like to see them on SmackDown, but they could also do well on Raw. Uh, I I don't know. Either way. And then finally, we've got Tommaso Ciampa defending the NXT Championship in a last man standing match against Johnny Gargano. It's match numero trace. The rubber match. Who you calling here? Yeah, this was supposed to be a triple threat match up until uh, Alistair Black was injured. Yeah, so I get another uh, Gargano and Champa match here, which is never a bad thing given the matches that they've had. Yeah, I think. I mean, 
I'll say it's never a good thing when somebody's injured, and I love Alistair Black, but at the same time, I think this is the match we all have earned and we've all deserved. Uh, we need the rubber match. Gargano won the first one. Ciampa won the second one. Ciampa's got the belt. Put it on the line. Last man standing. Here we go. I'm going to say Gargano gets it. Uh, yeah, I mean, I don't know. This one could go either way, in all honesty. Um, I don't know who I... I think I'm going to go with Gargano. Let let the crowd go home happy. I'm going to, go, going to agree with you on this one. So, but yeah, so that's uh, that's NXT TakeOver Brooklyn 4. Uh, I think it's... I think it's going to be a good night. It's going to be a good show. And uh, I might be watching it at my buddy's house uh, that I haven't seen in a while. So we're going to try to get together for that one. And uh, maybe I can actually watch it live. That last match is the one I'm most looking forward to. But uh, let's move on to SummerSlam, shall we? Uh, it is fr- It is from the Barclay Center, New York City, for the fourth year in a row. Uh, I I think next year they're they've got to move. They they have to next year. I mean, like I don't know. They I I've, I've been hearing rumblings that this is their last year in Brooklyn anyway. So yeah, me too. I'm kind of be surprised that they don't move next year after hearing everything. Yeah, they. I mean, they really should just. I, I don't know. I mean, New York is cool, but it's like the same spot every year, four years in a row. Is you know, it gets old. But uh, anyway, yeah, let's let's run through this. They've got two pre, uh, or I'm sorry, three pre-show matches announced so far. Uh, Cedric Alexander will defend the cruiserweight championship against Drew Gabagulak. Who you calling there? Uh, as much as I like Cedric Alexander, I just have a feeling he's going to drop the belt. I think he's, I mean, he's had a good run with it. I think Gulak's going to get it. I would really like to see Gulak win the championship, just because I've I've been a Gulak fan for a while now, and I'm like, he needs a belt, man. He's a great wrestler. He's a good throwback to a, a simpler time in wrestling. Uh, but I like him. So I'm going to call Gulak as well. Rusev and Lana will face Andrade, Cien Almas, and Zelina Vega. Mixed tag action. Who are you calling here? The whole feud has been kind of lopsided. Like every week it's been either you know, Cien Almas going over or Zelina Vega going over on Lana. I know. Usually when that happens, you know, Somebody, you know, the other side always gets one win in the end, but I'm, I don't see that happening right now. I'm going to say uh, Zelina Vega and, and uh, I'm Johnny saying all this. Yeah, I, it looks like they're going to get the clean sweep. I just, like he, like he said, it's been lopsided. I don't get it. Like, they haven't given them one single win. It's not even a feud. It's just Rusev and Lana's been getting their butts whooped. But whatever. So, yeah, I'm calling uh, Almas and Vega. And then we go to the final pre-show match. It is the B-Team defending the Raw Tag Team Championships against the Revival. Who you got for this one? Uh, man, I really want to see the Revival get around it as tag champions. Um, yeah, same here. <laughs> so weird seeing Bo Dallas and Curtis Axel holding the belt. I mean, nothing against them. It's just... <laughs> I think they're good champions because they're, like, really over right now, but I don't know. This kind of reminds me of um, when they gave Rhino and Heath Slater the SmackDown tag titles. Like, they, yeah. were, they were really over for a minute. They gave them the belts and, you know, to make everybody happy, and then they had them drop them, you know, a couple months later. I don't think they're going to have, the, have them drop the titles on the pre-show. So I'm going to say the B team finds a way to win. I don't know, man. I'm going to. I really want it to happen, so I'm going to go with the revival. Uh, one of the best tag teams in the world, baby. 
Did you see that uh, Bully Ray kind of crapped on them on Twitter? Really? No, I did not hear about that. Yeah, um, because obviously, you know, this this past Monday night was their first show since, uh, I think, was it Monday or Sunday? I, th- I believe, yes, it was Monday. That's right, because I was at work. That Jim the Anvil Neidhart passed away. And they dedicated the show to him that night. And during their the Revival's match, they did the heart attack during the match, but they didn't end the match with it. And I kind of see Bully Ray's point because he crapped on them on Twitter for that. He said, oh, my gosh, they just used, like, one of the greatest tag teams ever used their finisher for a middle-of-the-match spot. It's like, oh, yeah. It's like, I yeah, I, I get it. And then uh, Scott Dawson shared it and said uh, said something about thanks for thanks for the input, bully, or something like that. And I'm like, dang. <clears throat> so a little bit of... A little bit of heat there, seems like, but whatever. I don't know. But let's get to the uh, the actual card here. Uh, we got the I don't know why the hell we're seeing this again match between Finn Balor and Baron Corbin. Hell yeah, because everybody's so invested in this feud. I mean, jeez. Well, I mean, yeah. I can't get enough of this. Yeah, Kyle, because one is tall and one is short. So. Yeah, it's- Basically, the Daniel Bryan big cat suit. They can't think of anything else to center it around. One's a little guy, and the other one's a big guy. Don't you get it? They don't like each other. Uh, It's so dumb. But who are you calling for this? And how many many one-on-one matches have we seen between these two on Raw leading up like you heard in the last couple of months? It's like none of them Too many. Yep, I know. We gotta have another uh-huh. one, Kyle, because we gotta pad yep. out the card. Yep. Well, I'm gonna say Finn Balor goes over here. Hopefully, he ends this pointless feud. Yeah. Well, they're still gonna keep feuding because reasons. Because w- Aaron Corbin is still gonna be really tall at the end of this match, and Finn Balor's still gonna be kind of short at the end of this match. So. Yep. So they got to keep it going, man. The feud lives on, and it never dies. Uh, I'm trying to find the uh, non-title matches here. There aren't many. Every single, yet again, every single title is on the line. Every one. There's not a single title that was left off of this card. Um, to be expected with it being a biggest show as SummerSlam is. Yeah, I know. I, I, I get that. But it's like, it, it would mean more if they didn't do it literally every pay-per-view now it seems like every pay-per-view every title is on the line and it just i don't know i don't i don't like that idea it, does, it makes it feel less special i i get it the universal title isn't always on the line because brock is never there but that's you know the only one now, there have been some shows this year where like some of the mid-card titles haven't been on the line i know there was some where the, U- where the U.S. title wasn't defended. There was some of the Intercontinental title wasn't defended. I think I think there have been a show or two where uh, there have been some tag titles that haven't been on the line. So yeah, I've been like, like that every pay per view. Most of them. I just I don't know it. <sighs> I I don't know. I guess I'm alone in this. But anyway, uh, the only other non-title match on the card here is Daniel Bryan versus The Miz, possibly the best feud accidentally built up by the WWE in a decade, probably. Yeah, I mean, this feud is definitely, like you said, this has definitely had the best build to any match on the card, I think. Yep. Eight years. I, I didn't even realize that. Eight years, all dating all the way back to their stuff at NXT. They have been at each other's throats and feuding eight years and they're finally having their summer slam match here my hope is that maybe they can have a match for the wwe title at mania but it's just me anyway who are you calling here daniel bryan versus the new 
the uh, the new daddy versus the slightly less new daddy, Miz and Daniel Bryan. Um, like you mentioned here um, just a few seconds ago, you know, hopefully they'll have a match at WrestleMania for the WWE title. I actually think that's the direction they're going to go. So this isn't going to be the first. This isn't going to be a, you know, the end of this feud. I don't want them to yeah. kill it, like have it every month. But you know, if they, if they are, maybe they can be in a tag match against each other at Survivor Series, like on opposing teams, or. You know, and and then like at Royal Rumble they do something, and then at Mania they finally have another one on one. You know that that's how you build a feud. Yep. But yeah, so well, that's what I'm hoping for. For this one, I'm gonna I'm gonna say the Miz gets this uh, this one. Man, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, because if Daniel Bryan has like the winning moment now, it's like, yeah, I, I mean it's not dead. Um, because, you know, the Miz can keep going after him. But the whole thing is, like, Miz has been like, ah, I don't need to face you, I have nothing to prove, and blah, blah, blah. So, I don't know, I'm gonna, yeah, I'm gonna say the Miz for the, for the win here. The awesome win. Yeah, uh, let's, uh, let's move on to the championship matches, shall we? Shinsuke Nakamura will defend the U.S. Championship against Jeff Hardy. Who you calling? Um, I'm gonna say Nakamura hangs on to the belt somehow. Yeah, I heard rumors that Shinsuke could be going back to New Japan, but I don't. I, I mean, at the same time, at the same time, I don't see Hardy getting the belt back. At least not right now. So. Yeah, I don't see Shinsuke going back. I mean, I wouldn't hate it, but I wouldn't like it either. I don't know. I'm torn. But I mean, uh, Randy Orton will probably get involved somehow and end up costing Jeff Hardy. Yeah, for some reason he's obsessed with Jeff Hardy, and I don't get it. He's like really weird. Like maybe Jeff Hardy refused to shake his hand after Hardy or after uh, Orton touched his junk or something. I don't know. You, you're. You're in the dark on that story, aren't you? Huh. Uh, me and for the every every everybody listening is uh, to the podcast so far has heard the story, but I have not told Kyle this story, so it bears repeating. But apparently, in a podcast from 2012 that somebody dug up just now, like I don't know why nobody like nobody's dug it up before now, and the WWE says they are looking into these allegations. Uh, a former writer. Or WWE said that Randy Orton would greet new writers by pulling out his junk and then touching it and then telling the writer to shake his hand. And when they told him no, he would berate the writer and basically cut a promo on him and tell him he was going to tell the bosses that he'd refuse to shake his hand. All the while, his junk is hanging out. The hell? Yep. This is a thing. This this is a thing, but I don't know. It's it's just speculation for now. I don't know. WWE says, oh, we're looking into it. Like, yeah, I'm sure you are. They're not going to do anything. Um, They're just telling people they're looking into it. It's Randy Orton. What are they going to do? Uh, Vince McMahon, he probably thinks it's hilarious. Ha, ah, ah, had his junk out. Junk hand. Ha, ah, ah. ha. I do that to people every day. What's what the hell's are wrong with that? <laughs> oh man! But anyway, uh, yeah. So, uh, we're we're gonna try to get that trending hashtag junk hand. Everybody listening, hashtag junk hand. <laughs> or if you want to make it more Randy Orton themed, hashtag junk hand out of nowhere. There you go. I think I like that one better. Yeah, that that so may. They need to put that on a T-shirt. That thing would sell. Uh, I may, I may put it on a T-shirt. Look for that. Redbubble dot com forward slash people forward slash pod rest uh, pod rest society. Uh, so yeah, we may have a we may have a hashtag junk hand out of nowhere T-shirt coming out soon. Um, but yeah, I'm not saying yes. I'm not saying no. But uh, to put it to put it in a better way, I guess he he pulled out his viper. 
But okay, uh, you guys got the junk hand story twice in one podcast. Lucky you. But anyway, uh, predictions here. Uh, you said Shinsuke. Uh, yeah. Okay, yeah, I'm going to say Shinsuke because Randy will probably come out and hit Jeff with the junk hand and cost him the cost him the match. And, and then we yeah. will then we will see a we will see that feud go on its merry way. And maybe I don't know. This is a few, uh, a heel versus heel feud, but because uh, I was going to say maybe Nakamura could take on uh, Andrade, but I don't know, that's heel versus heel. That's, I don't know, that'd be weird. Anyway, regardless, moving on, we got Dolph Ziggles with Drew McIntyre in his corner defending the Intercontinental title against Seth Rollins and the brand new, uh, newly returned, swole-looking, crew-cut-having Dean Ambrose. Who you calling? Oh, boy, that's just... And this is another tough one. I think this is one of the tougher choices on the card. One, I'm disappointed that it's just a straight one-on-one match. I mean, not that these two won't have a great one, but I was hoping it'd be like a ladder match. Yeah, but then, I mean, why, you know, the guys in the corner would, you know, they could just do whatever the hell they wanted then. Now they have to, you know, play by the rules. Uh, I don't, you know, I've heard rumors of this happening. I hope it's not true. I've heard rumors of, like, Ambrose turning on Rollins, turning heel, costing in the match. Yeah. I, I, I feel like I'm, like, the only person that doesn't want to see that happen. Um, I, I don't know how I feel about it. I would be cool with it because when was the last time we've seen Dan, Dean Ambrose as a heel? I'm confused with the shield. Like in the original run. Yeah. So it's been a long time. I I think it would give a new dimension to the Dean Ambrose character. Um, I don't know. It, it could be interesting. Um, give him his badass aura back. As much as I don't want to see it happen, I'm going to call it. I'm going to say that happens. So I'm going to say Ziggler retains due to it. Yeah. It's going to take three guys to beat the Kingslayer. Dolph Ziggler with his newly permed hair. Uh, I don't know. His hair looks weird to me the way it is. I don't know. Yeah. It's like it's something. It's like, it's like Dolph is. It looks different almost every week, it seems like. Well, well he's like, like been he straightening like, it he lately. He looks like this, and some weeks he looks like he, he should be in an 80s hair metal band. Yeah, I know. People are people are saying people are saying now he kind of looks like a cross between uh, old school Chris Jericho and two thousand three Triple H. I don't huh. know. I mean, if you'd have to look at the pictures, but yeah, a couple weeks ago he did kind of look like old school Jericho. Uh, but uh, moving on, this next match isn't technically <clears throat> uh, isn't technically for a title. But it is for a thing. Braun Strowman will defend his Money in the Bank briefcase, or excuse me, it's a contract, pal, against uh, Kevin Owens. I guess should Strowman lose by DQ or countout, he will still lose the contract. So any way he loses, KO is the money, new Mister Money in the Bank. So what do you, uh, what do you think is going to happen here? Huh. You know, they've had Strowman lose, like, in, like in all of those ways on Raw here the last few weeks, building up to this building up to this match. You know, he's had matches with Jinder Mahal where he's, you know, lost via DQ, lost via count out. Yeah, well, because he's, he's uh, the money in the bank holder, so therefore they go through that same formula every single time. Money in the bank holder must job. Like I don't get it. Every it's it's that way with every single one. I don't get it. I thought he would be different, but nope, he's got a job. Well, I mean, he didn't on he didn't on Raw this Monday in that tag match with Finn Balor, but 
Yeah, well. He actually got the pin. He actually got the pin in that match on the hall. That one was different, but I'm talking. You just made the point that he's been losing, you know, all these by DQ yeah. and everything else. So. I think they're just doing that to show, oh, man, he can lose by DQ. He can lose by count out. Oh, boy, he really used to be careful. I don't think that's going to matter. I think uh, I think Strowman wins this match and keeps the uh, contract. That's probably going to happen. However, I'm going to go out on a limb here. I'm going to say that a, the shock of the night is going to happen here. I'm going to set it all up. I'm going to say Kevin Owens finds a way to win, and he's the new Mr. Money in the Bank. <clears throat> and I feel that he's going to get involved in the main event somehow. But we'll get to that. Um, the women's title matches. <sighs> we got triple threat. Carmella defending the SmackDown women's tag title against Becky Lynch and Charlotte Flair in a triple threat. What predictions you got for this? Uh. You know, it's kind of puzzling, because if they have Carmella retain here, who else is she going to face? I mean, the only one I can think of is Naomi, and don't get me wrong, I like Naomi, but I don't think it'll be like, you know, like an earth-shattering moment if they have Naomi beat Carmella. Nah. So, Becky needs to win. Do what? Becky needs that win. I, I just. I agree. That's she, what I hope happens. I really didn't want this to be a triple threat with Charlotte. I like Charlotte, but I mean, she's been off TV for a month or so. I don't think they really. They didn't need to put her in this match. Um, I think she should have returned after SummerSlam. Yeah. And I was hoping it'd be a one on one match between Carmella and Becky. So. But with this one, I, I honestly don't know the direction they're going in with this. I'm just going to go with what I want to see happen, and I'm going to say Becky Lynch gets it. I'm going to say Becky pins Charlotte and mm-hmm. wins the championship. That way, Carmella has the whole, well, I never got beat thing going on, and then there's some tension between Charlotte and Becky. But either way, Becky wins. That's that's what I'm hoping for. Okay. I'd be good with that. Oh, yeah. Then we've got uh, Alexa Bliss defending the Raw Women's Championship against Ronda Rousey. I swear to God, if they have Alexa go over, I'm punching the TV really, really hard. I'm I'm not joking. I have a, I have a really bad feeling about this match. I have a really, really bad feeling that they're going to be like, LOL, Alexa wins. Because why the F not? Why wouldn't she win? She's only taking on the baddest woman on the planet. Come on. <sighs> you know, before um, this Monday, before we learned that, you know, Jen Neidhart had passed away, um, I honestly thought they were going to have Natalia turn on um, Ronda Rousey and, and help her Alexa retain, and they'd hold off on the title change until that evolution pay-per-view, but they're yeah. obviously not going to do that. I don't even see Natalia being at SummerSlam this Sunday to begin with. And if she is there, why the hell would they have, you know, the, Natalia, you know, turn heel and have the fans want to boo Natalia after that, after that happened? That would just be cruel. I'm thinking Alicia Fox might get involved or something. Oh, yeah. Or maybe... Um, Nia Jax comes back and gets involved somehow. But I don't know. For, for now, I'm just going to say they're just going to go ahead and do the title change. They're at SummerSlam, the biggest, you know, the second biggest show of the year. You know, why can I create a big moment and have, you know, have um, Ronda Rousey win her first women's title there? So I'm going to say she gets it. That would be such a deflating piece of crap moment to have Alexa beat. Ronda. I'm not going to put it below WWE because they've done crap like that in the past and I can see them doing it again because it's dumb and they're, oh, we got to build up for the Evolution pay-per-view, pal. Because, you know, apparently that's going to be more important. And don't get me wrong, it is important. It's a big thing. But come on, this is SummerSlam here. I'm hoping... 
maybe Alexa gets her rematch and gets beat at uh, Evolutions. I'm going to... Uh, I don't know. I'm going to call Ronda, but I'm not super secure in that pick at I mean, it, all. One thing I've noticed with Alexa Bliss, just because I'm you know, a big fan of her and everything I've realized, I've noticed they've never had her win any, a match at any of the big four shows. I haven't even noticed that. I will say... I, I, I don't see that changing. Well, I, I, I have noticed quite a few things about Alexa Bliss, but that was not one of them. So kudos to you for, for figuring that out. Let's go with uh, the tag team match. I don't know how many people actually want to see. Uh, the Bludgeon Brothers, Harper and Rowan, take on The New Day for the SmackDown Live Tag Team Championships. Who you calling here? Um, I, was, I was quite disappointed to see The New Day end up getting, that, getting the match. I was hoping it'd be the bar. It'd be something different. Yeah. I've like, seen this match before. Yep, I know. And honestly, I don't think The New Day really need the tag titles right now. No. So I think I, I decided the Bludgeon Brothers retaining maybe the bar will beat them for it eventually, or maybe somebody, some other tag team they might bring up, or they might maybe do something with Sanity instead of having them job out to the New Day every chance they get. But Oh, Kyle, you're crazy. That's not going to happen. <laughs> Well, you know, the next show coming up is Hell in a Cell. So maybe uh, we can get the bar versus the bludgeons in Hell in a Cell. I'd be good with that. That would be great. Um, This is another one. I'm not super comfortable in this pick, but I'm also going to say the Bludgeon Brothers. Let's see how it goes. I've done way too many... Vince McMahon impressions already during this rundown, but I don't know. Let's move on to the two big matches of the night. I'm looking forward to seeing them both, but I'm looking forward to seeing this one a bit more just because I love these guys. AJ Styles defends the WWE title against Samoa Joe. Who you think for this one? You know, this is something you and I actually talked about last night. Um, the way they, the way they booked Samoa Joe, basically, kind of like they've basically been booking him as a glorified jobber. I mean, they make him look. I mean, he still looks really strong, and he looks like a credible opponent. But it's like he never wins any of these big matches that he's in. Yeah. Yeah. Like I don't get. I don't know. I'd like to see him. You know be U.S. champ and WWE champ and whatever, but I don't I don't know if that's going to happen. Okay, yeah, because I've heard, heard talks, but, you know, they want to keep that, you know, keep the belt on Styles for a long time, possibly beating CM Punk's record, at, you know, his record reign as WWE champion. Can't really look at Brock Lesnar have you know have him. I know technically he beat it, but you can't compare those two rings. Yeah, it's not the it's not the same belt either. Yeah. So if they gave it to Styles, that'd be more legitimate, I think. Um, right. I think it's gonna be a great match either way. I mean, the the build has been so so for it. I mean, last night on SmackDown was that was a good way to you know that was a good way to you know keep it going that uh that was kind of weird but the, yeah like with the uh the letter from his wife yeah that was uh odd but yeah i mean it was it, it's like a per they, they made it a personal feud now so these two can beat the beat the snot out of each other but i was just excited about this match you know before they did any build with it just given what these two can do. So, I mean, that's going to be, it's going to be fun to watch regardless. Right. I'm going to say Styles retains here, but this isn't going to be the end of the feud. It's going to be pretty long. long yeah. Term, I, think. I, I think the same thing because they have advertised those two at Hell in a Cell. I know card subject change. However, 
Um, I think it might be a rematch for the WWE title because something screwy may happen at this show or, you know, right afterwards. So, yeah, I'm going to say Styles retains. And then this next match, it is most likely going to be the main event of the night. I don't know why it wouldn't be because this title always closes a show or any feud for the title, you know, regardless if the title's on the line or not. Closes a damn show, which shows you the importance of Raw over SmackDown. Brock yeah. Lesnar defends the Universal Championship against Roman Reigns. Match number four? Yeah, uh, wait. No, this is four this year. Yeah, or yeah, this is three this year. So four in total. Okay. What? Uh, who you call him this one? Oh, boy, this is, you know, I mean, heading into WrestleMania, we thought, oh, they're, they're going to they're gonna give it to Reigns, it's obvious. Yep. What happened, Brock Retain, heading into the greatest Royal Rumble, I heard people say, well, you know, they want this to happen. Such a big moment, you know, maybe they have it in a different country, he won't get booed as much, he might get cheered, so they're going to give the title to him there, no, it didn't happen. Yep. So now we have it at SummerSlam, and this has gone from a match that I just didn't want to see to now it's very intriguing because as we've seen the last few weeks overall, there's quite a few scenarios they can go with this thing. Yeah, I mean, you... that is true. Well, my scenario, not to blow out ahead of you here, but there are two scenarios that I I'm, I see uh, happening. If Kevin Owens wins earlier in the night, I see him interrupting this match, cashing in, winning the title. Kevin Owens loses earlier in the night. I see Brock winning. Just beating him. Just like at Mania. Because WWE wants to, ha ha, we fooled him again. Now we're going to set up our rematch for Hell in a Cell. Because this is, I, I don't feel this is the last time we've seen this match. They're going to keep giving title shot after title shot to Roman Reigns, and he's going to keep losing. Mm-hmm. But I I feel that, and there there was another Vince impression, by the way. Uh, but, yeah, I, I just, I don't know. I feel like they want to keep the title on Brock because reasons. Just... Just freaking because. Because screw us. Yeah, screw us. That's why. So, I don't know. I see Brock winning. Yeah, same here, actually. Um, well, I'd love to see a cash-in, though. I'd love to see Strowman cash-in at the end of the night. Like, whoever wins this match and walks out as a champion. That was my initial prediction. Yeah. Um, after Money in the Bank which could still happen. I mean, there's still the possibility of... Yeah, Braun you know, could cash. Paul, Paul yeah. Heyman swerve us again and end up turning on Lesnar. I mean, it doesn't look like it after this past Monday, but hell, you never know what the, the creative team is, so... Right. But I don't I know. Here. Just to, <laughs> to surprise everybody again. Just to screw us all. Yeah. Mm-hmm. All right, well... That is uh, NXT and SummerSlam all rolled up into one fine little ball here. Uh, the To let everybody know, this segment is uncut. So I just hit record and go, and we did our thing. There wasn't a whole lot of editing because we were recording it the day of posting. So there's not going to be a whole lot of time to sit there and edit. I want to get you guys the show on time. Sorry the runtime was a little long. Uh, we are going to try in the future to keep the runtime a little shorter. I can assure you next week's runtime will be a little shorter, but next week's runtime, uh, or next week's show, is going to be a little different. Greg and I are doing a watch along. It's a SummerSlam themed watch along episode and uh, where we also do the list bro 
the list next week, bro, is the top 10 worst matches in SummerSlam history. And that goes hand in hand with the not one, not two, but three WWE Network matches or SummerSlam matches on the WWE Network that we will be watching along with you. So we will tell you what SummerSlam they are on. We will tell you the start time, and we will give you a countdown, and you can watch along with us and laugh, have a good time. They're not good matches. I the I, I will say this, spoiler, the third match is actually a pretty good match. The first two, no. But all you guys f- like torturing yourself, don't you? We do, but it's funny. And we love torturing the audience, apparently. So I hope you all have fun with it and have fun with our lists, bro, of the worst matches in SummerSlam history. It's 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 going to be a fun a fun week. And all three of the matches are connected, not just because they're SummerSlam, but they have another connection that you will find out. I'm not going to spoil it for you. You will find out next week on the podcast. So... Big thanks to Greg for joining me earlier on the show for all the news and the list. And Kyle, thank you for joining me now for the this uh, NXT and SummerSlam preview. Not a problem. Now, you and I, Kyle and I, I I'm going on vacation this week, so we're not going to be able to record. However, there, which is why we're Greg and I are doing the, the watch-along. We've already got it recorded. It is in the can. It will be posted. Kyle and I will come at you in two weeks with our rundown of what the hell we witnessed on SummerSlam weekend from Brooklyn, New York. Later. This has been a Drama City production.